Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Journey's End Master Mode Let's Play episode. We are doing a playthrough using only melee weapons, which has been a ton of fun so far. Last episode, we defeated the Wall of Flesh and we unlocked Adamantite in our world. We almost finished our gear, but between episodes, I went ahead and finished off getting our Adamantite sword and our Adamantite spear, as well as our last piece of the breastplate. The other thing is the Hellfire Yo-Yo, which you can get in the Underworld. It's not that rare, so I went ahead and farmed it up because it does some pretty good damage, as you can see right here. So now we've got a few good hard mode weapons to replace our Enchanted Sword and our Knight's Edge, which we were using quite a bit last episode. And you can see right here we have a few accessories as well. These three right here are the new ones. The Yo-Yo Glove is from the Skeleton Merchant. We've also got the Titan Glove now too. That's from a Mimic and the Philosopher's Stone, which is also from a Mimic. So let's go ahead and combine these really quickly. So we've got the yo-yo bag that we can create, the Charm of Myths, and the Power Glove. Let's go ahead and run over to the Ice Biome so we can start farming up some of our ice items because I know there's a bunch of good ice weapons. And I also want to get a Frost Feather so we can get our wings, and that will free up an accessory slot, which will be really good. Well, we found an ice mimic just now, so let's go ahead and take this guy out. This might be a little bit tricky underwater here, but the yo-yo does pretty good work. And, ooh, we got an ice tortoise. Okay, this isn't too bad. We need to get out of here with all this water and everything. The spawn rate is surprisingly low down here, though. I feel like whenever I don't want enemies to spawn, they're all over me. But the second I do want them to spawn, it takes forever. The main thing I'm looking for down here is the icicle, which we can get from some of the mobs. So that'll be good. And then we can also get the Amarok, which is another great yo-yo. Although this fire yo-yo seems to be doing amazing. And we don't even have our yo-yo bag on right now, so we can put that on in a little bit. I'm just kind of trying out which weapons I feel like are the most useful. So maybe I will put on the yo-yo bag. I went ahead and just brought these accessories with me. And we're going to switch it out for the Brain of Confusion. And if you noticed at the beginning of this episode, we didn't do a lore piece. The main reason for that is time management, because this was my first week back at work. And it's been taking a lot more time. Things at work have picked up quite a bit. So I'm just trying to manage time and the lore pieces for being a 30 second part at the beginning of the video take me as much as most of the edit of the whole video. So most importantly, I want to keep the videos consistent and keep producing high quality content for you guys. So we'll just kind of see how it goes, but I'm definitely going to do more lore in the Wendy series, but maybe not every single episode like I have been doing. So to speed up the farming, I've been using a bunch of bombs and just kind of blowing up this whole area. If we can just make a big opening in the ice biome, that will greatly increase the speed we can farm this stuff. And I've got plenty of bombs to do that. I think we just used 200 bombs already. These bombs really don't do much, but we've cleared this up a little bit more. I think we've got like 20 bombs left. And I haven't been using the most efficient bombing method. But this is also kind of nice because it creates tons of spots for these enemies to get hung up on. And then I can quickly destroy them with my yo-yo. And this is a perfect spot to just completely destroy all these enemies with a yo-yo. Because they're all climbing in from different areas. Now that we've used all of our bombs, I think I'm just going to mine out the rest of this. And then we should have a good enough arena. Ooh, we have another Mimic right here. So let's get, take this guy out. And yes, we got a Frost Brand. Awesome. There we go. We just got the Ice Scythe. That's the last thing we needed. So with an auto swing 
and rolling this to the best modifier, it will be pretty good against the bosses, I think, because we can get these stacking and kind of place them in the right positions. Ooh, we're getting damaged here. Sweet. Well, our ice farm actually worked pretty well. I pretty much just sat right here, swung this yo-yo around, and I think we've got pretty much everything we need. We have the ice brand. We could get a beam sword and we could get an Amarok, but I've got this yo-yo already that's pretty good. I think Amarok's a little bit better, but we'll probably be able to just stick with this yo-yo until we beat the mechanical bosses. So here's the final arena. I mined out most of this stuff and tried to open up a lot of the different caves so we didn't get enemies trapped in there and reducing our spawn rate. And then I tried different things with standing up high to try to boost the spawn rate as well. But in the end, it kind of worked better to stick on this side. Oh, a Mimic. We'll go ahead and kill the Mimic, and then we can head back to base. This yo-yo is so good. Oh, another Ice Brand. Oh my gosh, there's so many enemies. Did I really just freeze? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was teleporting back and they froze me and stopped me from teleporting. So now that we have our icicle and the frost brand, I wanna go ahead and climb up to our floating islands so we can start fighting some wyverns. And that way we can get some souls of flight because I also farmed up the ice feather and some frost cores. I don't know if we're going to need the frost cores, but I wanted to have them just in case we want to switch from adamantite to frost armor, which I think would actually be better. But I think for now I'm going to stick with what we've got because I think we're going to be fine for the bosses, but I definitely want some wings before we start fighting bosses. Okay, we got a wyvern here. So let's go ahead and bring it down to the ground. And let's fight it up here instead should be right back. Okay, this is much better. Fighting it with low gravity is really hard. We just got to be careful because it does like 200 damage. But I think we'll be able to get them. We just need to keep these dodges up. And almost got them here. There we go. One wyvern down. And we got 13 souls of flight, so we just need to kill one more, and then we'll have wings that will be quite good for a long time. Okay, here we go. We got a wyvern. We just gotta be really careful. Whew, that was close. <laughs> okay, harpies, you're just distracting me. I don't know if the yo-yo is the best weapon to use against it right now, but the yo-yo is pretty precise, and I think it's doing all right. Ooh, it's almost dead now. We got a pinky over there too. We'll go kill that after we get the souls of flight. Don't find too many pinkies. I think that might be our first pinky that we found. Whoa, <laughs> lots of slimes in the tree here. Okay, so now let's run back to base and we can craft our first set of wings. I'm so excited. Frozen wings. And we got them as menacing on our first try. That's amazing. So now we can get rid of our blue horseshoe balloon and we can put on our power glove and then we'll just leave our amphibian boots. I think that will be a good set of gear for now. The next thing I want to do is fight some Crimson Mimics and Hollowed Mimics. You can craft the keys for them by combining Souls of Light and Souls of Night. And then all you need to do is put down some chests and then put a key in each chest and it will summon the different types of Mimics, which is pretty awesome. And this will give us some really good gear. We just need to be quite careful because they do tons of damage and will kill us in just a couple hits. And, whoa, there he goes. 
Luckily, I dashed into him when he got close, so it didn't do the uh, damage to me. You can get like that immunity frame from the Shield of Cthulhu. There's a couple really amazing items we can get from the Crimson Mimic. So there's like a melee weapon and then an accessory. So I definitely want to get both of those. Ooh, and we got the melee weapon. So this one is really powerful. It would be a pretty good item to use against the destroyer potentially because it does so much damage and it attacks so rapidly. It'd be nice to get the hollowed melee dagger. So we'll see if we can get that. I don't know if this icicle is going to be a better weapon. It is so nice to have wings now. Makes all these fights so much easier. Looks like we got the magic weapon. So let's go ahead and do a crimson one next. So hopefully we get what we're looking for. Now we just need the accessory. And it would be probably good to get two of the accessories for that. Because I think we can combine it with our power glove right now. Ooh, I think we may have just gotten it. We got the flesh knuckles. Yes, that's what we were looking for. Oh man, I'm excited. So it gives us seven defense and makes enemies more likely to target me. Yes, we can do the berserker glove. Perfect. The berserker glove keeps all the effects of what we just combined it with, but we get that seven defense and the enemy's more likely to target us. So that is quite powerful. I definitely want to roll that to like warding or something. But yeah, that bumps our defense up a lot. Even though we're not getting the dagger we're looking for from this guy, we're still getting potions and tons of gold for reforging. So it's still pretty helpful to be farming these guys up. And we've just got one more key for the hollowed. So let's go ahead and try that out and see if we can get anything on this last one. It is really nice to have an auto swing on a yo-yo because the second the yo-yo comes back, it immediately activates, so I don't have to like ever re-click the yo-yo. I can just hold it down, which just is one less thing to worry about. And so I think it's it makes it feel like you have kind of an infinite yo-yo when you're using this glove in addition to a yo-yo. Well, it doesn't look like we got what we were looking for, but we did get a ton of these healing potions, which is nice. And we got some hooks. Maybe I'll put that on, and we can sell all the rest of this stuff and get some gold. I have almost everything that I wanted to collect before doing bosses in hard mode, except for there's an item we can get from the goblin invasion. <laughs> this weapon is so powerful. Oh, we're destroying the wizard, except we need to be careful. It does tons of damage to us. Okay, where is it? There it is. Okay. No, we died. <laughs> I was too excited about using our little claw. Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't despawn. Oh, it's going to destroy our NPCs for sure. Okay. Oh my gosh. We got it our first try. The Shadow Flame Knife. Yes. Okay, let's try the Shadow Flame Knife out. Yeah, this is pretty dang good. We could definitely use this against the twins and against, you know, maybe even Skeletron Prime. I'm not sure, but yeah, this is insane. <laughs> for random enemies, this is probably my favorite, but for like a single boss, it might be better to use a yo-yo. We'll have to just kind of see. The Goblin Sorcerer is pretty powerful. I think I'm just going to kill the enemies first and then... Just kind of ignore that guy until we finish the invasion. We're pretty close to finishing the invasion, although we still only killed one goblin summoner. And yeah, oh, there we go. We got the second one and we got another dagger. That's great. So let's just see if we can finish this off before another one of those summoners spawns. I think we did. Perfect. So we've got our mushroom NPC who spawned. So far, he doesn't really sell anything that useful, but if we wait a while, we will end up getting the Mushroom Spear, so that'll be really awesome to obtain eventually. We've got the old farm for Wendy, and it was covered in corruption and everything, but I think the Hollowed came through here, and you see a little bit of Hollowed right there? Okay, and here's 
the old base. Looks pretty sweet. And we are in the hollowed. It's kind of weird because there isn't much hollowed. But I think this is enough. Whoa, we got a rainbow slime. Those are so rare. I think this is enough hollowed to build an arena and fight the queen slime. Now all we need to do is go underground and find the crystals that are used to summon the boss. So it should be pretty simple to find those. I think we finally got deep enough to find crystal blocks. So we should be pretty good. Now we just need to look for the special crystals and then we'll be able to summon this boss. Ooh, there it is. I see it. It kind of has a movement to it. So that's definitely a crystal for the boss. Perfect. We got our gelatin crystal. Let's do this. Queen slime. Okay. Oh, already taken too much damage. Okay, we need to be very conservative here. Because I know this is going to kill us so fast if we make any mistakes. And we need to keep all of the little slimes under control. And mainly just keeping our distance is going to be important. Honestly, our projectiles look so similar to some of her projectiles that it's kind of tricky. Okay, but we're doing pretty good just staying far away from it. Don't want to be clever or get too close or anything. And uh, Incor seems to be doing a good job helping us out. Ooh, took some damage there. I keep thinking we're going to get adrenaline or something. Doesn't matter if we take damage <laughs> in master mode as long as we're not dying. But in Calamity you have the adrenaline mechanic which I miss a lot actually. It's quite fun because it rewards you so much for missing you know, the enemies for quite a while. Like right now we would probably have adrenaline and then we would do some crazy damage. Fortunately with this boss there's no time limit so we just keep fighting and as long as we play conservatively and don't mess up like that Oh, thank goodness for the Brain of Confusion. Ooh, we are starting to mess up, but there are some hearts on the ground, so we'll grab those. Okay, now she's mobile and flying. Oh my gosh, this is getting crazy. So many projectiles. I just needed to focus on dodging for a second. 33 seconds until we have our heal. One of the issues is when you do damage, it drops slimes. So it's sometimes a little bit better to not do damage for a second when you're taking too much damage. Okay, 10 seconds till we can heal. Oh no. Oh, we were so close to our heal right there. This boss is trickier than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so this time I'm going to extend the bridge out quite a bit more because I think that arena was way too small. So let's build a much bigger arena and I think we're going to have more success. This time I might use my mini map. I think that might help quite a bit and yeah we'll just need to play it a little bit safer and focus on killing the ads and not getting hit by bubbles like that that was silly we also could defeat this boss after defeating something like the twins because I think the twins will be pretty simple but we'll We'll kill this boss. I mean, this should be the first boss of hard mode, so we should probably kill it first. It doesn't really give us much, though. We'll, we do have that potential of getting the armor set, which would be nice. We don't really need the armor set 
because we already have adamantite. But it seems like having this larger arena is really making a big difference. We were just so congested in like a 50 block arena over there. It looks like there's actually an animation that the queen slime makes before she shoots all those little bubbles out. So that's kind of a nice thing to take note of. She does kind of this like charge effect right before she shoots those. Man, these enemies that she spawns are actually the hardest part of the fight, I think. Well, at least at this first phase. This is a pretty good strategy. We run from side to side, and then we just need to control adds and spawns. And then we need to do lots of dodging on this phase because things are getting much harder. Man, this is such a bullet hell. <laughs> In a lot of ways, I feel like the Empress of Light's mechanics are a little bit easier to predict because it isn't just so random like this because a lot of the movements are all kind of just different than what I normally am dodging. But I think that's a fun thing about this boss. It makes it more exciting. I would highly recommend the Brain of Confusion for this fight. As you can see, it's proc several times. And I'm using the Frog Amphibian Boots, and that's helping quite a bit, I think. Okay, we're still doing pretty good. Things are getting a little bit crazy. I'd like to have less adds, but I'm having trouble hitting the adds and getting them killed. Let's slow things down. I'm worried about the last phase. I don't know if there's like a 25% change in her mechanics. I don't know if she enrages or something. Time to do some clutch dodges. Ah! <laughs> okay, somehow we didn't get hit there. Oh, but we're gonna get hit here. There's too many slimes. All of my calamity death mode stuff has prepared me for <laughs> Queen Slime. Dodging 100 projectiles at once. Okay, we got her. <laughs> yes. That feels great. I'm quite excited about defeating the Queen Slime. Uh, that was one of the bosses I was most worried about, to be honest. Especially at beating her at this point in the game. And let's go ahead and put down our relic. Looks great. And we got the little slime pet, <laughs> super cool. And let's see what the treasure bag's gonna give us. Ooh, we got our hook of dissonance, the slime mount. That's actually quite helpful. Very fast movement speed with this and drop speed and flight speed, all very good. So I think that's definitely gonna be something we will switch out our slimy saddle for. And we've got some of the crystal assassin armor. I don't think we really need it, so I'm probably going to skip it, but we could always farm her up again if we wanted to. And I think that's a great place to end this episode. We defeated the Queen Slime, and next episode we're going to be ready to fight some mechanical bosses. I'm curious how many mechanical bosses we can defeat in a single episode. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss the next episode. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.